good morning students in the last class we were discussing about the two important pylums that is the porifera and nidaria and today we are going to discuss on another pylums that is tenophora the pylum called tenophora now now the tenophora an example is called comb bearing animals it has a comb in it so they are called comb bearing so tenophora is also called as comb bearing now what is the example for this uh, tenophora there are two examples one is called comb jelly and sea walnut sea walnuts and second example is comb jelly so these two are the examples of this tenophora they are comb bearers now when we talk about the distinct features of this tenophora it has a comb like structure so i just draw this comb jelly so this is the structure of this comb jelly then it is having some eight rows of plates right so this is how the structure looks like now it is having eight external rows this one is the eight external rows of ciliated comb plates ciliated comb plates so this is what ciliated so all these are having some cilia in it so this is the ciliated comb plates so eight will be there so eight rows of ciliated comb plates and these comb plates are used for locomotion movement they are used for movements locomotions this is first characteristics of this tenophora and second one is it can emit a kind of a light so it is called bio luminescence so this is another important characteristic bio luminescence very important so it can emit a kind of a light light so it is called bio luminescence then third one is it will lack it do not have the nematocytes there is no nematocytes it is not there okay so in stop this nematocyte they don't have nematocyte but they possess a structure called lasso cells this is a structure lasso cells and these lasso cells are also called as coloblast colo blast the lasso cells are called as colo blast to capture this is involved in capturing the food so this is the importance of this lasso cells and colo blast not colo site this is lasso or colo blast so this is a, a peculiar characteristic of this pylum called tenophora so it is having a peculiar structures and that means the distinct features like eight rows of uh, ciliated comb plates for locomotion and bioluminescence they don't have the nematocyte they have lasso cells or coloblast for capturing the food understand right so now i will give you a statement for remembering this particular pylum in depth so how you will remember that is 
I will give you a statement here. It is having, it is A. You remember A, B, C, D. So very easy to remember. A, B, C and D. This A stands for amoebocyte. Amoebocytes. And here, in this amoebocytes, actually in sponges, this gives a kind of a skeletal system. No, we discussed um, calcium and silicosis, calcareous and silicosis. And here this will provide the amoebocyte are involving in phagocytosis. Phagocytosis. Phagocyte means, phago means eating, cytosis means cell. Cellular eating. Cell will eat. So this amoebocyte is a cell. That cell eats the two things. It will eat the debris. Debris, unwanted things as well as the bacteria. So it will act as a against infection. So the Nidarian, Nidaria, sea walnut as well as comb jelly, they have amoebocytes for act as a and uh, against bacteria. It will act against the bacteria. So that is the A stands for. Okay. And second one is B. B already we have discussed. It has a peculiar character it's called bio luminescence so bioluminescence is an important characteristic okay so this is as well as you will have this is a biradial symmetry so biradial so this entire talks about this b so b you remember bioluminescence and uh, biradial symmetry third one we will go for c so here the C stands for other three things. One is called the comb plates. What is the role of comb plates? Locomotion. Okay. And the second one is coloblast. Coloblast cells. It is lasso. It is otherwise called as um, lasso cells. And this is for capturing the food. That is what we studied already. Okay. Then they have no, since they have coloblast, there is no uh, nematocytes. Nematocytes are completely absent. Okay. So next one is D. So here we talk for D is for again two things. One is called the diploblastic animals. Okay. Except comb jelly. Sorry, jellyfish will have tubuloblastic, but the other things are the diploblastic animals. Okay. As well as we can talk about the digestion process. Here the digestion, we have two digestions. One is called extra external digestion or extracellular digestion. Another one is called internal. Internal digestion. This alone you remember. Digestion is external as well as internal. Okay, so A, B, C, D, you can easily remember those statements. Okay, it is not completed. The, in this another statement I will give you. Letters that you remember is, you remember RAT, R, A, T. Okay, you also remember mouse, M, O, U, S, E. Okay, you remember mouse and you remember FID, F -I -D. These are the words that gives you an idea. That's all. Okay. Right. So with this, we will complete this uh, entire one. So here, we will not use the A. Okay. So we will use only this R and T. So R is for reproduction. R is for reproduction. And it has... The sexual reproduction, the reproduction is sexual, okay. Then we'll go for this T. T is for tissue level of organizations. Tissue level of organization. And this tissue level of organization will have mesoglia, I told you. Mesoglia. And this mesoglia is presented for jellyfish. Jellyfish is having this mesoglia. 
the tissue level of organizations okay right so next one you remember this mouse so we'll go for m m here two things we will talk about one is they are marine animal okay and second one this very important they are called monaceous monaceous in the sense the six are united that means the six not separated there is no male and female separately both together so that is called monaceous if it is separate it is called dioecious okay this is one then you go for this u you leave it so you add this o along with this s so o s and this o s is for only sexual reproduction only sexual reproduction there is no asexual reproduction this point is important okay though they are monaceous sex are not separate but it is only through the sexual reproduction okay this is one and next you remember this e and f so e f is for external fertilization so fertilization takes place outside the body external fertilization okay right so next one you remember this i and d together so i and d indirect development i d is for in direct development indirect development okay it is having a larval stage this larva is called cydiplic larva an example is called pleurobrachia example pleuro brachia larva so all these are important one okay right so next one you have the example point of that you have to remember descriptive cat is over then general features over then example example only one word you remember for entire thing that one word for example is called i write it here one word for remember example that is called pluto you remember the word called pluto so pluto is this pluto this is for pleuroblastic then uh, uto or to is for tenoplana tino plana it's an example okay so that's all about this phylum called tenophora very simple clear next phylum is platyelminthes platyelminthes you know plate means it is flat and helminthes means worms so flat worms okay now i will just give you a statement for remembering this a simple statement uh this is high hope high hope for tap so easily you can remember the statement high hope for tap here this i stands for internal fertilization okay so the fertilization is internal fertilization number 1 okay in i is for internal fertilization and next one it is also talks about indirect development indirect development so all this indirect development means larval stage will be there so the larval stage you will have <coughs> so many larvas here one is called uh, uh, miracidium then sporocytes radia all these are so some example few examples i will write it here one is called the sporocyst is an example then radi radia this is an example okay so uh, this this example sufficient okay that is enough and second one is for h the h stands for it has hooks some organism will have hooks as well as it has the suckers the organism will have hooks 
and suckers. If you see the diagram part of this platyal menthus, it has the hooks and suckers. And this is for the organ of attachment. It is getting attachment. So it is attached with the another organism. With the help of the hooks and suckers, it will go and attach with the other organisms. Okay. Next. Next one is for O. O is very simple. Organ system as well as both organ system. You there are two things: organ and organ level and organ system level of organizations. Okay, right. And P, P some example point of view, but this is very important here. We'll talk about a larva called planaria. Important, okay? Planaria larva, and this planaria larva will undergo polyembryonics. Okay, so this is actually undergo a structure called uh, a process called regeneration process. Again, it will some body parts will be regenerated. Last body parts will be regenerated. And polyembryonic is common. So another thing, P here the poly embryonic different embryonic stage will be there. It is very common in liver flukes. In liver. Flukes. Okay, polyembryonic stage is common in liver flukes. Then E. E stands for another important that is called the are endo means inside. They are endoparasite. They will enter into the another body of the host and they will suck the nutrition. So including human beings. That means it enters into the human's intestine. And it will suck the nutrition. They will attach by the help of the hooks and suckers. So they are endoparasite. Inside the host body it will survive. So that is E. Next one is for F. So when you talk about this F. Very important here another one. This F stands for excretory organ. Excretory organ. So this excretory organ of this fatty element is will have a flame cell. Flame cells are the excretory organ for osmoregulation. Osmoregulation means maintaining water balance. Osmoregulation. Okay. Right. So this maintains the water balance and all. And next one and this O we will not just take it down. So you just keep it as it is inside. Next one is R. R as usual will talk for reproduction. Okay, so the yes, reproduction here is again they are also called as monaceous. That means sex is not separated. Okay, right. So next one will go for T, and what is T? T is for triploblastic animal. Triplo. Blastic animals and another A, A is for A coelomate animal. There is no cavity till now. We have not started studying about coelomate, so only this A coelomate we are start, uh, started to study here. Okay, so in the plate element, this is flat, so it is A coelomate. Okay, and B is for bilateral symmetry, bilateral symmetry. So every thing that we have completed in one statement. Okay, so here uh, the habitat purpose that we will discuss later on. The level of organization that we have already understood. The level of organization here it is again uh, from here onwards we have the organ on organ system level of organizations. The coelom completely absent a coelom. Segment is not there so we have not discussed. Digestion is incomplete. That is the reason. Here the digestion is again the intracellular as well as extracellular. So the digestion is incomplete here. Okay. Circulation is absent. Respiration is absent. So circulation respiration absent means how it breathes through the body surface. It breathes. Okay. Right. So one more statement I will give you to remember the other parts of it. Okay. Then the entire parts will get over. Give one more statement for you to remember. Uh, Dora V saw pseudo person pseudo 
where he has seen the pseudo in the ICU, intensive care unit, with more care. Okay, remember this statement. So here we talk for this Dora. So what is Dora? That is dorsoventral. Dorsoventral. Dorso means upper part. Ventral means lower part. So dorsoventral flattened body. The it is body of this flatworm will be dorsoventral flattened. Okay, upper part and lower part will be flattened. Then next one is saw so you just leave it. Okay, just for sentence I just made it. Second one is pseudo. What is pseudo? Pseudo is pseudo segments. That is pseudo segments. That means no segment. Pseudo means false. Okay, it is not segment. Then you remember this IC. Okay, IC. And you will study separately. Okay. So this IC stands for incomplete digestive system. Incomplete digestion. Why incomplete digestion? Because it don't have a proper um, I mean it has only one opening that is the reason incomplete digestion we already studied okay but except flat worm but here if you talk about the uh, flat worm uh, uh, this is example okay this is incomplete flat, digestion is flat worm but uh, excluding but not there in the flat worm if you talk about the liver fluke in liver fluke it will enter into the human intestine and it will obtain nutrition directly from the host. So obtain nutrition directly from the host. Okay, this is. So this kind of uh, incomplete digestion, that is the flat worm. But only exception is liver fluke. This alone will take food directly from the host. Understand, right? This point you remember when you talk about IC. Then we talk about U. Used for unidirectional. What is unidirectional? It moves only in one direction. So unidirectional. Then next one, here this M and this C I will take. So we will talk for MC. MC is for moderate sepalization. What is moderate sepalization? Means formation of it. And the sensory organ in the anterior part. But here is moderate. That is the pylum which is the head formation is taking place. So moderately the uh, head is formed. Okay. Right. So now we will talk about this examples. I have got a statement for you to remember the examples. Fascinating tea with sumosa. Okay. So what is fascinating tea? So here fascinate is for fascicola hepatica. That is called fasciola hepatica. What is fasciola hepatica? It is otherwise called as liver fluke. So liver fluke is also called as fasciola, fasciola hepatica. Okay, right. And T is for tapeworm that is tinea solium. So tinea solium is otherwise called as tapeworm okay right so now here this sumasa you remember a word called uh, cystosoma 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 is also called as blood fluke cystosoma means blood okay so cystosoma so these are the examples that you can remember when you understand the statement fascinating tea with sumasa. Okay. So two pylums we discussed. One is the tenophora, another one is the platyal manthus. Then that we will talk here is the eskelmanthus. Now eskelmanthus means esk means cavity and helminthus means worm. The worm which has cavity. So an example is called round worm. That means it will have inside cavity. So round worm. Now when you cut this worm into cross section, it looks like a round appearance. Okay. So before we could study this, I will just talk 
some uh, important things the three things that we will talk here first one we will discuss about the elementary candle the elementary the elementary canal now the elementary canal of this worm will have three things it has mouth it has throat that is pharynx and anus so three things will be there mouth pharynx and anus okay and next one it has the sixth part of this is called dioecious what is dioecious that you know this six are separated so it is dioecious now when you talk about this dioecious here the male as well as the females are kept separately uh, it is very important here is remember always the female worm is larger than the male so this is female this is male so female is larger than the male so very important okay this point you have to remember this uh, as eskelmenth is previously how it is called it is called as nematoda previously it is called as nematoda and now it is changed its name into eskelmenthus so this two points you have to always remember when you study this eskelmenthus okay right so now here we will just go for the statement area so i will give you a statement for recall it that is called if you remember if okay dead i have just add one more d to this okay dead ask if dead ask put b t okay if dead ask b t poem so this is a statement you remember for recalling everything okay right so when you talk about this i f together we will talk for fertilization called internal fertilization so when you talk about internal fertilization majority or oviparous majority or ovi paris okay for example you will have ascaris ascaris is a ovi paris few are ovo vivi paris majority is ovi paris few are ovo vivi paris okay few are ovi paris who is that ovo vivi paris example is called vivicheria brand crafty okay so it is a very important example these are vivicheria okay so these are all very important thing regarding this internal fertilizations and next one is this 2d i will take it d and d this d is for direct development direct development okay and next one is id what is id here it is indirect development so development is both direct as well as indirect development okay right so this ask you again you remember it is askelmenthus askelmenthus okay right so now we'll go for b and this b is for bilateral symmetry t is for trubloblastic animals okay and p stands for pseudo coelomate already we discussed pseudo coelomate okay pseudo coelomate then here o and this o stands for organ system level of organizations o stands for then e is for excretion and the excretion in round worm 
takes place by rennet glands very important this is by rennet glands platelet mentis flame cells this is by gland called rennet and m is also very important the m is having the elementary canal that is three things we studied one is called the muscular pharynx pharynx means throat and it is having the elementary canal okay right so it since it is having the elementary canal it have a mouth and a anus so what kind of a digestion will be both opening is are there so digestion is always complete digestion okay right so organization you know organ system only then see coelom pseudo coelomet then segment is not there absent digestion is complete but circulation as well as respiration is always absent only is that clear right so this is one part of it now the uh, end, the description the descriptive uh, part that we have already studied it do not have any body segment at all so if the body segments are not there this worm is covered by a transparent tough coat on it okay that is important now uh, the habitat part of this alone we will discuss the habitat part most of the habitats habitat we talk about the place where it is surviving no so here we studied few are some free living but mostly we study they are parasites so they parasite mean they will parasite on some organism like aquatic organism as well as the uh, terrestrial organisms so in both they are parasite so uh, both aquatic terrestrial both they can be parasite on plants as well as animals okay so you remember the statement if dead as beating pot so entire thing that you will recall it now here we will remember the examples also examples i will just tell you a funny word to remember how you will remember this example you remember a word called anuska okay you remember this word very easily you can remember the examples it's everything just for studying purpose so don't take it seriously so and as ka you just divided so and for you will have and cyclo stomata and cyclo stomata and cyclo stomata is called hookworm hookworm it has hooks on it okay us for ustelia ustelia is otherwise called as filarial worm filarial worm filarial worm will have filariasis disease right then scars for ascaris ascaris lumbricol is otherwise called as round worm so remember anuska for and for ancyclos stomata for ucheria covers ascarias understand so this part that you can easily remember the phylum as well as the examples clear right next phylum is annelida annelida is a ring form that is we'll talk about all the segmented animals so when you talk about the segmented animals we are talking about the earthworm leeches and all this now this is the first segmented animals so far there is no animals segmented so this is the first segmented animals and it has metamerism we will talk later it has the metamerism you know what is metamerism no see met metameris or metamerism is the body is having different segments so this is the earthworm body is having different segments in each segments the organs will be repeated same the organs will be repeated so that is called metamerism okay then the body how it looks it is elongated body the body is elongated then internally the body here it is divided by 
the septa. Septa means membrane. So this membrane divides these animals into different segments. So that is called metamerism. Now here I will give you a statement for you to recall it. And that statement is uh, H S C I secondary hmm? bot botany. Okay. Then me M E H S C bot me. Then you remember this one word. I just cannot make it, but still it is Neelam. Okay. Then C I D. This word C I D. Okay. So with this we can entirely complete the entire one. So H will talk for the habitat. Here the habitat of this earthworm. It is a various. So I will just put it P, F, A and T. This P is for they are parasite. A is for sorry F is for free living. Okay, and this A is for aquatic. A is for aquatic, and the T here is for terrestrial. Terrestrial. So these are the uh, habitats like parasitic. They are free living, aquatic, and terrestrial. Okay, right. So that is what. Then we'll talk for this S. S is for cyzocelomid. Zyzo coelomate animal we already discussed in the coelomate. Then we'll go for C. C here we will have closed type of circulation. What is closed type of circulation? It is having uh, heart, blood vessel, everything, and here it has got a respiratory pigment respiratory pigment so we have got in our circulation of respiratory pigment hemoglobin so this have a respiratory pigment and the respiratory pigment two things one is called hemoglobin hemoglobin is one and another important one is called very very important chlorocurin chlorocurin uh, is an important respiratory pigment chloro curing understand right so these two are the respiratory pigments so we have just completed hsc now we'll go for this b and b you know it is for bilateral symmetry okay and this o is for again organ system then organ system and then we'll go for t t is for uh, Tribuloblastic animals T. Then M for here again. Once again, we will go for this metagenesis. M for metagenesis. Okay. Then we have got N. Uh, this M E together, you just take it down. So M E. Okay. So I just leave this E or no. So now we will go for this uh, Nilam sit. So I just erase this one and then go for this. Nilam said. So what is this N stands for? N is an, here we will talk about an excretory organ we will have. That is here, it is nephridia. So we had, we have seen flame cells for platelet menthes, rennet gland for ascalmenthes and anila for nephridia. Then uh, it is uh, dioecious as well as it is having the parapodia and all this so we will just talk that also along with this in nearish it is dioecious okay dioecious a parapodia swimming so that part we will just add little later so we will just go for this next letter is called e e and l i'll just add together why because we are having earth e for earthworm and L for leech. So this A E L earthworm and leech, they are called the uh, mone monoecious. That means sex are not separated. Okay, but when you talk about this N, okay, that is the reason I just told there. But still, I write it here. So this N once again you write it here. This again N stands for 
the nearish. This nearish will have dioecious. Okay, so it is dioecious, and it is having parapodia. Parapodia for swimming. Okay, so parapodia. This is a feet. Para podium is feet for swimming. So it's dioecious. But in state board book, just so small mistake will be there. But you just take down here. Okay, so earthworm and each monoecious, nearecious, a dioecious. This part you understood. So that means what is the reproduction? Reproduction here is this sexually reproduces. Okay, this is over. Then A we start for A is for this is aquatic. A is aquatic and here we talk about Annelida and Nish. All these are the aquatic animal. Then Yam is very important. The Yam part of it we have to study in depth this M part of it. The Yam part of it is we are talking about the muscles. How the muscle is? Muscle is the longitudinal muscle. Muscle is long lengthwise. As well as the muscle is circular. If you see the earthworm, the muscle is long and circular. Okay. And this will be helping. This longitudinal circular will be helping in locomotion like this. It will move. So it is helping in the locomotion. So the locomotion organ of this earthworm, all these annelids are our longitudinal circular muscles. Okay. This is very important. And then we will go for the CID alone. I just erase and go for the CID the C is for the C will talk for the C long. This animal will have the body cavity very important. First time the annelids alone, annelids from annelids onwards, it is coelomate. Okay, don't forget it. Before that, we have only pseudo coelomate. So C long. C long means it will be filled with a fluid inside. That fluid is called hydrostatic fluid for giving a skeletal system. Okay, for locomotion, everything. Now, uh, this kind of the hydrostatic skeletal will help in the uh, locomotions. Uh, very important locomotion. In this, we are going to study about two type of locomotions here, two uh, systems here. When we talk about this earthworm, when we talk about earthworm, the earthworm, the hydrostatic fluid still it is acting as a locomotion, but here it is having the Cite for locomotion. Okay, body Cite. Okay, and for leech, leech will have the suckers for locomotion. Helps in locomotion. So, this is our important one regarding this kind of a descriptive characteristics. Okay, right. So, then we'll go for ID. As usual, ID is for indirect. There you will have ID, I for indirect and D for direct development. So your indirect development also will be there and direct development also will be there. Okay, so the larva will have here is the trochopore larva is an important trochopore larva. So this is important. Okay, so that's all about this analytics example point of it now we will talk and then we will complete this pile example of it so the example of you will remember very simple i again i will give you a statement for you to remember the example is nerus nerus earth lamp remember this word okay so here i just divide this word Ner, ne. So ne for you will have the nearish. Nearish is a sand worm. Nearish sand worm. Then here you can even talk. You can just cut this. Yanni you can take near. Then he. Okay, so you can take irudinaria. Irudinaria. Irudinaria is for leech. The leech is called as Edunaria. Okay. Then we'll go for this earth. I just for 
combination of the sentence I have just given. Even you can put it as near lamp alone. So lamp here, lampito maruti. Lamp is for lampito maruti. This lampito maruti is otherwise called as earth warm. Okay, right. So that's all about this pylum along with the example. So four pylums we discussed today. Tinophora, Platyl Minthus, Eskel Minthus and Analeta. Next four pylums, next following classes and then we will complete this entire non-cordage pylum. Okay, thank you very much.